Welcome to a new In The Mail, the series that will touch both your passion for electronics and your bank account at the same time. Here is an example of how I'm getting most of my packages lately. They're bundled like this and forwarded through the EU so they take a different route and don't go through the normal customs import and taxation protocol. And I'm fine with that because VAT has been paid at the sale point anyway. There is no reason to pay any additional handling fees uh, to the local postal service. Now let's start with uh, some piercer probes and if you remember I have shown uh, these in the past but these were simple uh, piercing needles and I have two models here. I have used them, uh, they work both for piercing wiring, for probing and also for inserting into very thin uh, female profile connectors. Now I got these uh, different style uh, piercing probes uh, because they contain the same very sharp needle but I think these are nicer because they can also hold the wire you are probing and there is less of a uh, risk of uh, stabbing yourself with these. They have a thread so uh, they work like a screw which makes it easier I believe to pierce the uh, cable with less risk of stabbing yourself. On the back these have the same standard uh, 4 millimeter uh, banana insert so you can hook these up with your standard 4 millimeter test leads and I quite like them so they will be a, a nice addition to my uh, box of uh, probing accessories which is this one. Same as always you'll find the link uh, to these products in the description below the video. Next I got one of these DIN rail distribution connectors from AliExpress and I know what you're thinking right now. There are serious safety implications so you'd better use some known rated tested and expensive connectors in your electrical panel which I did and that's why I can show you uh, this side by side uh, comparison. The blue connector is a Phoenix Contact PT4 Quattro series and this is what I used in my uh, electrical panel which I built recently. Now Phoenix Contact is considered a reference in this field and they are widely used in the industry but let's also take a look at this one from uh, AliExpress. Uh, it's made by a company called uh, Sipon and it's the ST2 series they make a uh, different series as well. This one is rated for up to 4 millimeter wire. So it's a different class. It's slightly smaller than the uh, Phoenix Contact one, uh, which can take up to 6 millimeter wiring. But nonetheless, we are interested in looking at their construction here. And the construction of these two is pretty much identical to my surprise. The overall plastic part seems very similar and the uh, metal bar contact seems to be identical with uh, those similar bends towards the contact area, similar uh, spot welds in the same places uh, for the various spring contacts which are shaped identical. So in terms of construction I would say that they should be performing identical. There is of course the uh, question of the uh, materials used and how the uh, product is um, uh, tested and certified but remember China's infrastructure is not built with Phoenix contact connectors they're likely using their own products and so as a conclusion after looking at these uh, two connectors I would say I, I would have no problem of using this Saipun connector in um, an electrical uh, panel just because I think it's built really well. The sponsor of this video is PCBWay.com. They are a professional PCB factory which is equipped to provide a full service including SMT assembly, 3D printing, CNC as well as other manufacturing services so you can get your product from idea to reality. Check out their website, link below. They are currently running this cool feedback contest where they ask you for high resolution pictures of the PCBs or the projects you built using the uh, PCBs you got from them and they will be rewarding the best ones with some prizes. Next up I have this little guy which is an energy monitoring chip with the part number V9881D. This is made by a company called Vangotech and it's pretty popular because it's cheap and it has a bunch of functions that are useful for energy monitoring. So you'll find this chip embedded into a wide range of low-cost energy monitoring devices including smart relays. I'll put some screenshots on screen with the specs of this but it pretty much includes everything needed for energy measurement inside this chip 
and you get a UART interface over which you can read the various measurements it takes or calculates and those include voltage, current, power, energy, frequency as well as other parameters and the accuracy is decent, not great but good enough for most applications uh, and you also get a calibration feature so this little guy is packed with features and it's not expensive either so you can kind of understand why it's widely used in these low-cost consumer products. There are also many other similar options available on the market for the same application but this one is easy to get, it's cheap, it's popular so there's lots of info available on the web, it has a UART interface, an English datasheet and best of all can run down to 3.3 volt so you can interface this directly to an ESP32 to make a smart meter or smart relay type of application. I got one just in case I decide to play with uh, building such an application over the weekend. Next I got a few different thermistors and I've been building my stash of thermistors lately because I did have a wide selection of differently packaged NTC thermistors in my stash already but they were almost entirely 10k so lately I had to do some higher temperature measurements for a project in the 100 degrees range and you start to run into some voltage divider range limitations with a uh, 10k thermistor if you're running it through a 3.3 volt ADC. Hence why I tried to get higher values as well. So these ones on the left are uh, these type which are some thin film uh, thermistors. They work great if you want to sandwich them between two surfaces. Just make sure you use some uh, thermal silicon pads on either side. Uh, so the uh, very small thermistor in here doesn't get crushed between two pieces of metal for example. Next I have these bead type thermistors and you can attach these using a blob of uh, thermally conductive celastic. K745 is my go-to adhesive for these purposes. They can also be used as thermistors soldered to a PCB in an application where you don't want the uh, temperature of the uh, PCB influencing your measurement. So you, can, you could have this uh, sticking up from the PCB surface and measuring the ambient air without worrying that your thermistor is going to uh, get uh, any heat generated from the PCB conducted to the sensing element. And I also got this uh, kit with uh, these cheap MF52 type through hole thermistors that have a bunch of different values in here to experiment with when I need it. I'm sure these will come in handy someday. Same as always, you'll find links for all of these in the description of the video and while you're there the like button is just a click away so why not hit that because it really helps the channel. And because I've been sensing a lot of noise lately I decided to get some bypass capacitors in the form of this awesome t-shirt so I'll be wearing this in the lab whenever I need to take some measurements or something like that and I'm seeing a lot of noise I'll put this one on and give, given the amount of bypass capacitors on here uh, it should uh, solve the uh, noise issue. Now seriously I thought this was a pretty fun t-shirt to have so I ordered one. Let me know in the comments what you think about this t-shirt. Next up I got myself one of these small cheap laser line modules and I've used one of these recently because I purchased uh, a circular cutting saw and because I got the cheap model it didn't have a laser sight and I kind of felt the need for one especially when I started using the saw for the first time and I did my first diagonal cuts. I didn't really know where the saw blade was going to fall on the workpiece so I bodged one of these laser modules in there to approximately get a line where the blade was going to cut on the workpiece. So yeah, a handy little laser module which uh, proved useful after being kept in my box of goodies for a few years, hence why I got a spare one. Next I got a roll of this uh, supposedly 3M uh, cloth tape but it's not the type that I've shown before which was uh, typically called acetate tape on AliExpress. Now this stuff is probably made from the same stuff but it's just a, a little thicker than the acetate tape and it's not uh, necessarily intended for uh, electrical insulation uh, but instead it can serve as soundproofing material. Um, for the automotive wiring. You know, the stuff that automator makers typically wrap their uh, wiring harnesses with, especially the ones inside door panels and inside the dashboard to prevent them from making any noise if they happen to vibrate. So this stuff should be fireproof, although I would advise you to test it before installing it, uh, but it should really help those having older cars with annoying cricket sounds in the interior that is if you're willing to spend the time to take everything apart and carefully wrap it in this stuff. 
Next I got one of these uh, pneumatic air switches and this one in particular is rated for 16 amps and up to 250 volts AC. Uh, the electrical switch part is uh, this one here with uh, beefy terminals and uh, it seems like it might take 16 amps uh, judging by these terminals but I wouldn't use it to its limit and the part uh, which is used to pneumatically actuate the switch is here and the actual air pressure travels uh, through a tube and remotely actuates the switch in an isolated manner. So this could be really useful if you're trying to remotely actuate the switch. I'm not sure how long you could extend the air tube. It comes with a one meter long, but maybe you can insert at least a couple of meters, I hope. But another big advantage is the uh, electrical isolation. So even though this switch is only rated for 250 volts, you could have this control a relay, which is rated for higher voltage and you could safely switch kilovolts this way and the dangerous voltage would be uh, meters away from the switch, uh, separated by air, uh, and then th the user actually touching the switch is very safe. I have no particular use for this right now, I'm not playing with high voltages, but I thought this was interesting and I got one to check it out. Yep, and you can hear the switch actuating as soon as I put pressure on the end switch. And the last item in this video is this vacuum type pump instrument which is supposed to be a helping hand when doing SMT assembly by allowing you to uh, use it like a pickup tool for uh, placing components on the board. It was fairly inexpensive, uh, probably under $15. It, prices might have gone up recently but I got it a while ago at a lower price. And the biggest question is whether it accepts 240 volts AC or not because there is no markings on the back of the unit. But we shall find out soon if it's compatible or it will just release the magic smoke. I'm assuming that uh, this is a Chinese plug and uh, they do use 240 volts in China or so I believe. The unit does have two ports which are located here and it does come with two of these uh, suction pans. So I'm assuming that you can work with two hands and double the, assemble, the assembly speed if you can get good at it. I don't know why, why there are two ports in here. Or maybe they just repurposed this enclosure from one of those uh, aquarium pumps. I'm also assuming there's going to be a small hole on one of these pens. Yeah, it's right here. So you cover this with your finger to direct the suction action to the tip and release when the component is in the correct position. But let's give this a quick test and see how well it works. I've even seen a, a model on AliExpress that includes this five channel manual feeder type arrangement which could be handy for some people. So I have a wide selection of uh, parts here from 0603, 1206. I have one of those HC49 crystals. I have an ESP32 and one of these uh, white SOP packages. Now let's see how it's going to be uh, to handle picking up these. Uh, I think one of those uh, bent needles would work best just because you're mostly holding this at a 45 degrees angle so you're not going to be using it like this so one of those uh, bent needles would work best for for this application but let's give this a uh, test. Yeah, so it's picking up the 1206 just fine only that the problem is that the like the ergonomy of this is not good the position of the needle uh, with regards to the handle is not okay so like i said a 45 degrees bent needle would work uh, nicely let's check out the small 0603 yep it's picking up that as well Let's try the big crystal. So it starts to get problematic with uh, these irregular shapes because the needle alone cannot pick that up, cannot create the suction force. Uh, even when using the small uh, rubber thing on the end of the needle, you still can't um, create a vacuum on the surface of this crystal to pick it up. 
let's try it with the ESP32 module. Yep, so this one, it works much better with the large SOP package as well. So I have some mixed feelings about this tool. I could also be biased just because I did it by hand my whole life and I'm, I'm pretty good at it and I've gotten used to doing it that way. Uh, but it's just the ergonomy of this handle is not good. Like the tool works, but you're going to need a, a bent 45 degree angle needle uh, to be able to work with this. And maybe then maybe it could increase your productivity if you get used to it. The good thing about it is that this is not expensive. It's 15 to 20 dollars. So it's worth getting one and uh, trying it out. Maybe it's something you really like and you'll uh, use it every day or maybe not. But if it happens to uh, not be a good choice for you, then the loss is under $20. Same as always, links for all of the products shown in this video will be placed in the description below. So do check them out. That was all for today. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget you can support the channel on Patreon with as little as $1 per month to keep these videos coming or you can simply smash that like button which is free and helps a lot. Thank you and I'll see you next week.